Hi, my name is Zhong Wu. I've been requested to make this video about myself by one of my fans on my channel. So here it goes. The reason why I want to start this video vlog came from my own experience. When I was working for an insurance company, I got the feeling that I was at the wrong place. My daily work didn't really satisfy me. I could do a much better job if the company was actually mine. It's, it's just a complete lack of inspiration, really. During that time, I was watching videos on YouTube, which can sort of motivate me to do something else, or actually just make life a bit easier, I guess, at work. So I um, started watching stuff, interviews about Steve Jobs, and uh, his commencement speech at Stanford. I guess if, if I could produce some videos that some other people are going to watch it, who are right now, in a similar situation as me a year before, I would be really glad actually to help them to give them the last kick so that they can quit their job or quit anything they actually sort of think they have to do and do something really awesome, something that adds to their freedom, something that they actually really want to do, and not just because their parents are telling them to do it or their society are telling them to do it. You know, there's a lot of judgment going on right now in the Western world especially in the, in the uh, Anglo-Saxon world. For some reason, a lot of negativity going on there and uh, people judging each other, you know, there's this word that, that everyone uses, it's weird. Now, nothing is weird in this world, all right? <laughs> nothing, absolutely nothing. It's the judgment that something is weird. So on the world trip, the biggest goal is to find a cure for this negativity. When I started my world trip in China, I went to the north of China. I got the picture that even there, which I did not expect, because it's Asia and it's something totally different, it's on the other side of the world, you have the exact kind of cynicism, the sort of uh, a, a underlying negativity that, that runs through the entire society as though it's, it's in the air. So I left China and I came to Japan and the moment I arrived in the airport in Tokyo, I feel this strong energy going on, as though something coming from down at the ground, going up my feet, through my knees, and the hip, and all the way up to the top, something really strong is coming up. I think, you know, I, the people I met there in the first nine days are amazing people. There are people who uh, started their own businesses, who quit their jobs, and did world travels and, and, and you know, traveled on, the, on a bike for the entire world, actually, for many countries, I think 50 countries, I believe. So from these people, I learned how to do, the, do it myself. And I met Matt during the, uh, during the trip in Hakone. I was really glad that he actually started talking to me and his smile, I gotta tell you. You have to smile when you actually introduce yourself to somebody. I noticed that when Japanese people, when they don't travel or haven't traveled yet to another country, especially to the West, they don't have, they have a, a complete lack of sarcasm, which I attribute to the complete lack of the seed of negativity. There's something going on there, maybe it's religion, maybe it's like saturation of the state of development of the West. Somehow there is this negativity clouding the mind of the people. Mm, so that people judging each other on a daily basis and most of it is not existent in Japan at least in the places I have been if you say some sarcastic terms or some kind of humor or black humor they, they take it literally there's no kind of twisting around of truth I went to Kamakura I met this monk who I asked a very simple question how can you defeat negativity in your mind and he said very simple answer to that a fish is a fish and a tree is a tree. Don't judge anything by its nature. So you have to take things as they are. You might wonder how I actually do this. Koske gave me his bike, uh, which I named uh, Pegasus. It's, it's really, really meaningful because my um, Chinese zodiac is actually a, a horse. So uh, Pegasus actually fits. The most important thing about this travel is that you need to have a tent a tent which uh, which allows you to camp somewhere when there is no hostel available and uh, you need some kind of uh, a lot of tools so tools to uh, actually repair the bike 
and uh, I, I find it very very convenient to have a Swiss knife actually so I got this uh, Swiss knife that has at least 20 different kind of tools inside there uh, even the toothpick so uh, you know when you go out to clubs and you, you can use that to clean your teeth it has a pair of scissors which is quite neat because I need that in order to cut the strings for my string project for connection of children and the other thing that uh, is important is uh, you need to I don't know I, it's, it's really easy actually to travel the world on a bike you, you just get a bike some tools to repair the bike and if you don't have to work there's, there's, there's really no need for laptop and uh, no need for camera and just nothing you know just just get some clothes and not even clothes you can buy the clothes in supermarkets in Japan or you know on the road you can get the clothes for that matter if you need something that is very expensive you just borrow it I've been told that if you need something that for example to cover yourself in the cold like a jacket uh, on the road people will give that to you for free somehow you know in India it was possible uh, my friends um, was uh, received that generosity. The most important thing that you need to have, an attitude rather, it's not something to have, it's rather something that you are. So you need to be open. Sometimes on the road, uh, you don't have the comfort that you have at home. In terms of finance, I would say I met an, a few world travelers who did at least 20, 20 countries within one to two years time. Most of them said $10,000 is about right. You could potentially start world traveling with uh, $5,000 if you are on budget. The most important thing is when you start the world travel, you, have, you should ideally cancel all the contracts at your home. Most importantly, you need to stop paying rent. On the road, actually, you could uh, potentially make money. Really, you, you have enough time to make a business online. It's, it's nothing wrong with it. You know, just, just start it. You know, maybe you lose some money, but hey, you've got some experience there. And it's not as risky as you think. It's actually less risky than if you take a job that you hate. Yeah, start your own business. Start your own business. Basically, I started off with about five to six bags, and now I'm down to four bags. Um, and I think I can still cut down the number of bags even more. But um, I just don't want to lose too much of comfort. So uh, it's not really a lot of things that you need. And you can buy the stuff on the road. Things not to buy. Don't buy furniture. If you are thinking about going hiking, etc., I would recommend the shoes that are waterproof, lightweight, and hiking shoes. There are shoes called Keen. Those shoes are really cool because they are waterproof, they are lightweight, you can climb mountains with it, they have a fixed sole, extremely high quality. The price is a bit high, it's about $100 to $150, but uh, it's really worth it. Yeah, you can bring a laptop if you want. Yeah, the biggest danger actually in a world trip is that you get stuck somewhere in a country that you really love and you know you just can't get out so but you have to carry on just carry on and come back to the country you love most most likely it's not your home so uh, what exactly am i going to uh, do next after the japan travel which is going to be uh, another two weeks from now i would go to taiwan and cycle through the entire coast of taiwan possibly always camp on the coast instead of uh, using hostels because Taiwan right now is actually a really good season to go to it's quite warm after that I will visit some friends in South Korea over Christmas I would say I will spend New Year in Hong Kong with uh, one of my f former clients Tony Tony if you're watching this I'm coming after Hong Kong it will be Macau and after Macau I have no idea I just keep going I guess um, the most important thing that I would like to experience is actually the Trans-Siberian Express. or well, the length of the world travel, it's unlimited. So I just go as long as I hit all the countries in the world. Number of the countries in the world may change. I just, I just hope it gets more than less, you know, then I, I don't have to stop. <laughs> I heard there is actually a woman who traveled the entire world, went to all the countries without exception. There are a couple of people who publish their books. Would love to see some people commenting on this video and tell me which books they are because I couldn't find them. So I guess that's the introduction of me. Thank you.